that a lamp does no good unless it's plugged in. Right. That it doesn't have its power, it's not able to shine until it's plugged in. So this idea of of being plugged in uh, to your organization or to your community is is essential. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Harris. And Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales Wolves. Ow! Ow! That's right. It's time for another action-packed episode of the Sales action Wolves podcast. Pack. This is episode 159. Feeling fine. 159, baby. <laughs> And the title of this episode is Why Lone Wolves Don't Last. You ever yep. been a lone wolf? Yeah. Are you one right now? No. That's good. Yes. You? Yes and no. Right. Yeah. But definitely been there. Absolutely. Definitely been there. So, so it is the Sales Wolves podcast, and we talk a lot about what it means to be a sales wolf, but I don't think we've ever really talked about the lone wolf. Right. And I think the, maybe the best place for us to start is to really, uh, have the person that's listening to this, the person that's watching this really self-evaluate right. their current situation and just ask yourself, am I a lone wolf? Am I currently in a season of my life where I feel like I am a lone wolf? Cause you probably know. You probably no. know you're alone. You may have acquaintances, but are you really on your life's journey with a tribe or with a pack? Mm. Um, because the lone wolf, and it was, it was fascinating. Um, there's several reasons, and, and Noam said, the two main reasons for a, for a wolf to be alone are the wolf is young and seeking to challenge or join a new pack. That's okay. Or two, the wolf is old or sick and has been banished. Um, and typically the pack won't, won't, um, banish just an old wolf. Mm -hmm. They'll, they'll make up for it. They'll, 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 uh, protect it. Mm -hmm. But when the wolf, like there's a thing that happens with wolves when they get sick and old and, um, and they, uh, it, they can smell it on each other when it's that time. Mm -hmm when yeah. it's time to go and that they will actually banish themselves. Mm. They will disappear from the pack. Mm. Um, and so those two, those two are, are, are different. Okay. Yeah. But when you look at wolves, what happens if there's a wolf that actually gets banished from the pack, it's because they have repeatedly not worked with the pack. They have, they can't get along with the pack. It, they're, they're a repeated problem, okay? And when they get chased off, when the pack goes, enough's enough, mm. and, and the alpha pushes them out, that wolf is, is usually um, dead. dead very quickly. Yeah. Um, it's crazy. Their hormones change, mm -hmm. and they literally start disintegrating. It's one of the most dangerous um, one of the most dangerous places to be for a wolf because, and it's one of the most dangerous wolves that exist is that lone wolf because they kill just to kill. They don't kill to eat. They kill anything they come across and, and they're highly dangerous, hmm. highly dangerous. And, and they're not long. They don't, they don't make it long. And it's not just, and this isn't just like a mindset issue. Like it's physiological, mm. like their testosterone lowers, their yep. um, dopamine yep. lowers, their um, uh, cortisol um, would skyrocket. And it just puts them in a, in a physical frantic, chaos. Frantic, yeah. physical, chaotic state. And that's why they're willing to kill anything that comes in front of them because they just, when you don't know what to do, you do whatever you can. Right. And that's why they're not long for the world at that right. point. Right, exactly. And they literally destroy themselves. They literally destroy themselves. Um, it's uh, it's 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 a fascinating phenom. 
but you guys have all heard and ladies have all heard of a, a self-made woman or a self-made man. Mm -hmm. And we look up to these business leaders, but I, I am a proponent that that does not exist. I agree. There really is no self-made person. Mm -hmm. Um, for me to say that I'm a self-made man, just be just from this business is absolutely ridiculous. It's without a Tyler by my side, without a Nathan, without, and I could sit here and list names on down the list mm -hmm. that are in our tribe without a Trey, without a Wendy, without an Amanda, without a Kim, without, you know, um, all of these, if they weren't around, if we weren't a pack, if we were not a tribe, we never would have accomplished what's happening. There's mm -hmm. no way I could have done this on my own. There's no way you could have done it on your own. No. And, and so it takes, it takes a pack. And, and I, I always, I always like to push back on people when they claim to be self-made because a lot of times their argument will be, well, nobody gave me nothing. You know, nobody, nobody handed me anything. I didn't have a silver spoon in my mouth and I, you know, I didn't have opportunity growing up and you know, this and that. But the reality is being self-made versus not self-made. It's not just the positive things. Right. It's the negative things that you went through in your life that created the person that you are today. Right. And whether your mom and dad were incredible to you or whether your mom and dad were horrible to you, that still shaped who you are today. And if you are today someone that's succeeding, then you're not self-made. Right. I, I mean, that's <laughs> because it's all the people in your life that negative uh, had a negative impact on you that that right. makes you into you who you are. That's right. Uh, so to what makes a pack tight yeah. is a fight. Yeah. So what made you who you are was a was a trauma, a, a fight, a trouble, um, whatever you want to call it. And it's just funny. It's I don't know. It's odd to me. I mean, there's a guy I know that's very successful who has a podcast called the Self Made Man or the Self Made Podcast. But I just think it it completely disrespects any person that that human being has interacted with throughout their entire life right? to say that, no, I did this alone. That relationship did nothing like that. Right. That interaction didn't affect me in any way. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's a little bit ridiculous. So I can look back <laughs> over my life and I can see some of the sales jobs that I got fired from mm -hmm. and the people that fired me when I'm honest about it, I deserved it. Oh yeah. I, des I sure. deserved a, a good, 99% of mm -hmm. them. And, and therein, when I learned those lessons, I quit going around that same tree and, and I'm not self-made. I learned a lot. They helped mm -hmm. me. Right. Yep. That's, that's the epitome of what you're talking about there. I like that point of view. I hadn't thought about that before yeah. we started this. Yeah. It's gotta just... be harder on you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You got to be meaner to me. Maybe it'll help. <laughs> I'm, I am self-destroyed, <laughs> but but uh, tribe made, tribe community made, community made, right? Uh, but I mean, it's just it's just the reality. Like no one, no one, no matter how old you are, no matter what level of success that you've achieved, you did not get there on your own. Period. Uh, it just doesn't happen. And so when you think about a lone wolf there's a lot of salespeople. A lot of you are, are in sales uh, as your career. It can often feel lonely when you're in sales. That does not necessarily mean you are a lone wolf, right? Because there is a lot of time on the road. There is a lot of time, you know, cold calling and prospecting and, and sitting down with customers and you may not be uh, alone in that there's another person across the table, but you're by yourself. Right. And, I think one of the important things to, to mention here is that not being a lone wolf doesn't mean that you're surrounded by people all the time, right? But it means that you are plugged in to a community, to your organization, to your company, to mentors, to, um, you know, coworkers that you're competing against and competing with, um, you know, the analogy of a, of, of a lamp, that a lamp does no good unless it's plugged in, Right. that it doesn't have its power. It's not able to shine until it's plugged in. So this idea of, of being plugged in uh, to your organization or to your community is, is essential because when you're feeling lonely, if you do not plug in, you can become a lone, lone wolf. wolf. 
That's because right. a lone wolf doesn't start out as a lone wolf. No. It's a gradual process of right. becoming one. But once you become one, there is massive and immediate action that has to take place. Or, just like we said in a wolf pack, death is around the corner. Death is around the corner. <laughs> Destruction, yeah. mayhem, chaos. And nobody likes to live like that. Yeah. Although some people are addicted to it, they still don't like it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I was looking at this, uh, some of our notes here, and, and relationship coach Jordan Gray had four things that he listed about a lone wolf. And he said, the lone wolf may feel like asking others for support is unnecessary, unfair, weak, pathetic, or dependent. Hmm. And and my answer to that is you can't do life alone. No. That's no fun. We're, we were made social beings. We're, we, it is it is part of our our drive in us is to be around others and and to help them and allow them to help us mm. um, and th- to be a lone wolf in that scenario when I read that it's unnecessary unfair weak pathetic or dependent you know what you, you know what I, I think of there is ego. That's that's literally ego. exactly the words I was thinking. Yeah. That is ego. Yeah. That is that 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 sh- is like the definition of ego. Mm-hmm. Um, and he said the lone wolf strategy is also commonly a childhood survival mechanism that served served them at a time when it made sense. For example, and Tyler covered this, their parents didn't really raise them, and so they felt like they had to raise themselves. But they are unwilling to let go because their ego fears its own collapse. Hmm. Well, if it's to be, it's up to me, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. That's the epitome of that. That's an yeah. ego talking. Yeah. Um, yes, you have to do that. Nobody's going to do the work for you. Nobody's going to make the calls for you. But um, when I got zero results on a call, my God, I got to call Tyler and go, Tyler, man, yeah. I'm going to run through what happened to your Something didn't go right. Mm-hmm. This didn't go right. I don't know if it was just a fluke or if I've got a pattern going on. Can you see You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and a lot of this w- within the, the wolf pack, if you will, but within your organization, within uh, your community, you know, we talk about this a lot within our organization as far as communication goes, is that there are going to be times and seasons where you need the pack. Mm-hmm where you hit a rough patch, where just life happens to you and, and yeah. you need that support. You need to be able to ask questions when things go wrong. At the same time, there's going to be seasons where the pack needs you. Absolutely. And unless, unless during your difficult season, or, or let's take the reverse, and unless you're there for others, others are not going to be there for you right. when you need it. And so it's, have you seen it's both kind of a catch-22. Have you seen both happen to yourself in this organization? Oh, yeah. yeah Absolutely. Me too. Yeah. It's, it's, and I remember, I remember when this stuff started really forming in my mind. It was before this business, and I had somebody tell me, and I read it in books, and it's a cliche that um, you'll become your five closest confidants, mm-hmm. right? And, and I looked, and I was like, well, that, no big deal. I got... I don't have five close confidants. <laughs> I don't know anybody that I associate with really or have mm-hmm. deep relationships with. And and if you have nobody, then you're going to be nobody. Yeah. Right? So so I, I, I when that was an aha moment in my life, I was like, "Oh my gosh, I I I probably need to be nice to people and and care about people and and I first had to learn some self-care because mm-hmm. I was pretty harsh on myself at that point. And you'll find that most lone wolves are extremely critical and judgmental of themselves. Mm-hmm. And so guess what? By default, they are extremely critical and judgmental of others. Mm-hmm. And it's very hard to form a pack or a tribe when you are that way. Yeah, and, and the other way of... Uh, the other way I've heard that that quote is that you are or that you'll become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So if you're not spending time with five people, if you're just by yourself, then you're going to become the average of you, which means you're not going to grow. Ever, <laughs> you're ever. just going to stay the same. Right. Which is obviously not good. You know, what's funny is is not um, social isolation. We talked about being social beings. Mm-hmm. 
they did a study and social isolation is is worse than smoking 15 cigarettes a day <laughs> it's worse than being an alcoholic health wise yeah health wise is worse than being an alcoholic or never exercising it's worse than never exercising being isolated and it's twice as bad as being clinically obese hmm. is that crazy that is crazy that that was in that was from that relationship coach jordan gray that's nuts to me yeah and the, and the interesting thing is when it comes to especially sales um people seem to isolate themselves when things are not going well and a lot of that again is ego it's pride um you know i don't i don't want to be a part of the community because i'm not doing well when i start doing better then i'll plug back then, in yeah and that's just taking you down an inevitable path towards your demise and so the way we started off this podcast and asking you are are you in a current season in your life where you feel like a lone wolf it's being able to realize like am i am i isolating myself right now so that's the first question but then the second question is why why and i would beg to say that the majority of the time it's going to be because you've had some obstacles oh. over the last few months well, I can't trust that anybody. you have isolated yourself. Like within our organization, it's the easiest tell of someone that's on their way out when they stop, when they stop communicating. hundred percent. Hey, you heard from Bob. I hadn't heard from Bob in two weeks. You heard from Bob. Nope, 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 nope. No one's heard from Bob. Okay. Well, there's the beginning of the end. Later, Bob. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's being able to kill your ego and when you're going through a difficult season, when you're going through a difficult time, being willing to ask for help, right. being coachable, being teachable. Some of our best coordinators, uh, our best um, uh, agents that work with us that have been here for years, if something goes wrong, they're immediately on the phone with That's a right. mentor. They're immediately on the phone with the coach. They're immediately on the phone uh, with us saying, hey, this is what happened. You know, what, what would you have done during this situation? And this is someone that could be and should be giving that advice to someone else as well. Right. But they're still, their ego is, is such that, um, they're completely willing to be open about their faults and about their, right. um, about the, the obstacles that they're going through. And that ultimately is what keeps you in the pack. Right. But when you start isolating yourself, not only do you have all those negative side effects, like we just talked about how actually terrible it is for you, but the perception of you from the pack, just starts to steadily decrease That's right as people don't hear from you they assume you're doing nothing right because <laughs> if if i don't know what he's doing i'm assuming he's not doing anything nothing um and that's not a good place to be in from a leadership perspective but for those of you that are out here or that are listening or watching that are in a sales leadership type role you really need to focus your time on figuring out who the lone wolves are mm -hmm. and seeing if they're if they are in a in a situation where they're savable or not, where they're yeah. rescuable or not, because some of them won't be, they're, they're too right. far gone. Right. But some of them you can save and it'll take you being proactive because if more than likely, if they've isolated themselves, if they're a lone wolf, they're not gonna all of a sudden just snap out of it and start right. plugging back in. So it's being able to proactively reach out to those people and just say, hey, what's going on? What's up? Nobody's man? heard from you. Yeah. You know, what's going on? Um, be able to have those transparent, conversations and starting that conversation with a time where you felt isolated, where you went through a, a difficult time and became a lone wolf yourself and how you got yourself out of that and how you plugged into the community and the organization and how you reached out to people to figure out, you know, what you were doing wrong so that you can pull those back in because you don't want to just leave them out there to die. Yeah, and if you're if you're riding high, don't ever forget the difficult times. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because if you're riding high, it is pure selfishness to not turn around and, and reach down and help somebody that may be struggling. It's pure selfishness. Now you can lead a horse to water, you can't make them drink, right? So so it's it's funny, you can get in a and I've done this, I've I've created a lot of anxiety and frustration for myself for people that wouldn't accept the help mm -hmm. um but i love the i love the line from uh the movie um with kevin costner in it when he he was the uh coast guard rescue swimmer yeah and they asked him who he decides who 
how does he decide who he saves and who he lets go when he's rescuing somebody in the water? And he just looked at him and said, I, like it wasn't even comprehensible. He goes, I swim as hard and as fast as I can, and the sea takes the rest. Hmm. And so when you are riding high and and you offer help, offer offer um, solution or offer a lend, lend, lending ear just to listen, um, you know, don't base what they decide to do. You can't take it to heart. It, it just is what it is, right? Hmm. People have to have to make that decision to make that leap from lone wolf to pack. And, and it is what it is. But um, it's funny. I saw this quote here. It says, says, it says, yes, you can get by as a lone wolf for a time, but without a tribe, it is impossible to thrive. Mm -hmm. Um, I love that saying. And then how to overcome your lone wolf tendencies. Being a lone wolf, you've isolated from relationships. And since we're social beings, we need relationships. How to overcome your lone wolf tendencies is fight like hell to create a social life. That doesn't mean you need to go drinking every night, right? That's probably not the solution. <laughs> That'll create more isolation. Um, but, but connect with people. Put yourself in a situation. Connect with people. Support people. Reach out to people and form that tribe, right? And then extend to others an offer of support, mm -hmm. right? And then extend to others and ask for support. That's one of the keys. It's a give and take, and that's how relationships are formed. One of the uh, things I've learned uh, over the last six months, and it's regard to, and to number two that you just said, extend to others and offer support, is this idea of if you need it, be it. You know, if you need hope, then give somebody else hope. Right. If you need certainty, help clear up some of the uncertainty in somebody else's life. If you yep. need, um, you know, community, be community for somebody else. Like yep. if you need support, support somebody else. Right. Um, I think it's it's fascinating to see how the very thing that you so crave and desire, if you just be that for someone else, that you will create it within yourself. That's right. Or you will create that reciprocal yep. uh, value back from the person that you just supported or from somebody else that sees you proactively supporting another person. Um, but just by the simple act of doing for someone else what you need done for you, it's almost like you're doing it for yourself as well. And you don't do it with the expectation that they'll be mm -hmm. it, but it will show up. Mm -hmm. And in reverse, when I talk to people and they go, they say, well, b well, people just hurt me. I can't trust people or people screw me. I want to look at them and be like, well, quit screwing yourself. Yeah. Quit yeah, screwing yeah. yourself, mm -hmm. man. Be yeah, if nobody around you is trustworthy. It's because you're not trustworthy. It's because you're not <laughs> trustworthy. <laughs> <laughs> I love Erwin McManus in this one sermon. He said, uh, he said, I love how people say like, nobody gets me. And he's like, because you don't get you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody understands. That's because you don't understand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How much understanding have you gifted yeah. to yourself and others? So exactly. It's uh, it's interesting to talk about this. Very interesting. Yeah. So kind of the takeaways coming out of this podcast is really to spend some time evaluating your life and, and figuring out, are you connected and plugged into a community of people? Uh, or are you out there lone wolfing it yeah. right now? Um, and then once you figure that out, if the answer is yes, you know, I, I have isolated myself over the last few weeks, over the last few months, over the last few years, then why? Right. And the why behind, behind your decision or your um, uh, evolution into isolation is ultimately what needs to be addressed. Right. And needs to be addressed with other people, not by right. yourself. And, and you have people that when you ask them that why, well, well, I went through this horrendous divorce. I went through this terrible health crisis. I went through this. I, I went through this. I went through. Do you think you're the only one? Mm -hmm. Like, you think this hadn't happened to a lot of people? Mm -hmm. I mean, you think you're the only one on this planet? Yeah. I mean, reach out, talk to people, form relationships, yeah. and don't do life alone. I've never... And even somebody that's killing it financially, but they're a lone wolf and they're mm -hmm. out there. They're a predator. In my book, they're just a predator. Hmm. And, and, and I promise you the day you exit, the day you exit this earth, 
you will not think, God, I wish I'd made more money or I wish I'd made more sales. You'll go, man, I wish my kid was here. I wish I'd spent more time mm-hmm. with them. I wish I had at least six best friends to carry me off this planet, right? I wish I had gone on that fishing trip. I, I wish when John was going through this, I had called him because I went through that and I could have helped him. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's, it's never, if you read the biographies of all of the most successful people that have ever lived on their deathbed, they never, ever mentioned a thing that they wish they had had more of or something. It's yep. all relationships. And so pour yourself into those. Pour yourself into those as you're going through this journey of life. Absolutely. So with that, guys, this is episode 159. 159. <laughs> of the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales, Sales Wolves. Wolves. Ah, Ow! Woo!